Something I was curious about were the last few years of Osamu Dezaki's career. After being moved by his works, such as Ashura no Jo and The Rose of Silas, I found it strange that no one here in the West talks about his last works. This is the case even among the bigger fans. After looking into it for myself and watching those last entries, I did find this appointment. Even the great directors in anime can miss sometimes, but that's alright. Still, there was one entry from 2005 that really moved me. It's the last of the longer form series he directed. Unfortunately, it seems to have been lost in time. Trying to watch this and having the footage for it for this video was a journey to experience because of how obscure this has become. I unearthed it for this video partly out of my curiosity for Dezaki and because someone needs to talk about this considering how good this is. And I have a lot to say. Before Dezaki unfortunately passed away, he left us one last great entry, the Snow Queen. The Snow Queen is a fairy tale, a series of them meshed together. They are tragic and bittersweet stories that were written almost 200 years ago by Hans Christian Andersen. Together with Dezaki's script and storyboard enhancements, the viewer is once again pulled into those classic Dezaki emotions that brought the viewers to tears in Asha no Jo and in the Rose of Silas. It's Gerda's painful but beautiful journey to search for her missing childhood friend. It's a personal journey for myself as this felt like Dezaki was saying goodbye. After looking at his last works after this, none came close to this as the final great Dezaki work for me, in my opinion. This anime changed my perception of episodic anime. When it comes to anime like that, such as Dirty Pear and Violet Evergarden, it tends to be hit or miss. It feels as if it is difficult to constantly come up with completely new stories and characters in these because they don't have much to do with following into the main plot and can't lean on it. As a result, each one has to try harder to be great on its own without the plot. The Snow Queen changed that thought for me. All of the 36 episodes and each of the many episodic ones moved me. There wasn't a single episode I didn't like and it surprised me. This is also the anime that made me look more critically at Violet Evergarden. Violet Evergarden is a lot like this, except the Snow Queen does it better in my opinion. I didn't have anything to compare Violet Evergarden to before. And now that I have a similar anime to compare it to, I have a new yardstick to judge it by. Because of the Snow Queen and the quality of it, I ended up lowering Violet Evergarden's score and replacing it with this on my favorites. Some say this is a children's anime. However, many of the stories presented here can be so dark and terrible that it's surprising. I cried several times throughout the series, and thanks to Dezaki's direction, the stories are not just interesting but so unpredictable that the viewers never know where the story is going to go. It has so many plot twists. The good about this is that they were written cleverly and cohesively. They are not written in a sloppy manner, such as with Code Geass. With some episodes, you think it can't get any worse, though it does. And it surprises you with tear-jerking surprises, and then still continues to plummet downhill and tear your emotions apart. That's how I felt while watching this. What I am not saying is that this is a depressing anime. Gerda's friendship with Kai 
in her struggles to find him is also filled with hilarious amusement. I'm left with some tragic memories. The story of the little match girl left me scarred that sometimes the hope and optimism of a child can't escape what awaits. The story of the girl of the green peas showed the highest hope, suffering the greatest shock and disappointment. As Gerda continued her journey, she met people who left a lasting impression on her, some for better and many that brought her sadness. Many of them she never came to know whatever became of them as the narrator is often the bearer of bad news. I appreciate that her character isn't all powerful. She can help and she can fail, as painful as it can be for her. It's difficult for a girl like her to leave her home and be forced to fend for herself. This is what the situation has called for, considering her circumstances. At least Kiki from Kiki's Delivery Service had the convenience of her writing, but Gerda is all alone. The realism is shown clearly in how she struggles for food water, and shelter as she travels from town to town looking for what matters most to her. She might catch a fever or fall into a trap from bad meaning people with strange powers. Despite this, it is her determination and promise to Kai that keeps her going. Even when it looks as if she won't make it, she has a drive, where it's not necessarily about reaching the end but seeing how far you got to show for it. Ragi teaches her this lesson during the times they traveled out in the snow. She's homesick, often breaks down, because she misses her family in Kai, who becomes her absolute and unwavering goal. Still, there is nothing more that she wants than to be able to see him again, and figure out the mystery of the Snow Queen, and why she took him to her ice castle. The lessons of Gerda's travels made her mature. She was always a fiery character at heart. She's not afraid to move over you if you don't move over. Towards the end, she comes to be more than a mere farm girl, hardened by her journey. She'll need it for the battle between good and evil she'll be forced to partake in, that Kai lays at the center of. Ragi, the passionate minstrel, carries the burden of being the only survivor of the war. Filled with guilt, he wonders why the Snow Queen only saved him. While moving hearts with his music and teaching Gerda his wisdom, he is also on his own journey because he wants to understand the Queen and settle the misunderstandings.
as the queen watches over Kai in her ice castle. It reminded me a lot of the dynamic between Mayatel and Tertero from Galaxy Express 3.9. The issue since the beginning has been the broken mirror. It shattered and the shards spread across the world, corrupting that which they touch by changing the hearts of those affected. Many of the episodes show how even the kindest person can become monsters. Another touching part of this anime is the focus on redemption. As much as a character might be unlikable, it explores how one can make up for it. To have once been a criminal is no disgrace. To remain a criminal is the disgrace. While with Gerda, a shard went into Kai's eye. Kai's own dilemma afterwards is to help rebuild the broken mirror for the Ice Queen. But the shard he has has traveled into his heart. Even if Gerda finds him, there is still another issue. The climaxes at the end left me with even more tears. At the same time, the payoff felt magnificent. Despite the issues, such as the bad animation at times, that Dezaki himself never managed to overcome, the Snow Queen made me feel and won me over as the type of anime I look for.